Here we go. Good for you. Zip. There we go. Why did you stop? You didn't stop. Oh, we are. Yeah, we have rocked ourselves. That was the problem. We do have the appropriate amount of jog brushes on site. And uh, we do need two of them. How much stone do these make? Quite a lot, but I think this will be the right amount of number of stone to put into this machine. You make gravel, you make sand, you put it in. Do I have a sludge boiler? Obviously not. And you're going to make sand for now. But this is to, this sand will be yeah, we will be using to make the sand casting things for us. Speaking of sand casting, uh, you are then making 180 molten lead. To make the plate out of it, we need 100 every 4 or 100 every 8 per machine. We are making 90 every four. So, technically, two of these. They will be underperforming a bit, but that should be fine. Let's make this. Uh, you make lead. You make lead. Uh, we do need the sand stuff as an input, so go one up. Go one up. You make lead. You make lead. Put these up. And connect you up. Perfect. And then over here, the sand stuff will come in. Perfect. Pull you in, pull you in. Then we need some power. How about this power? We need some laps. There, 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 there. And then out goes the let. This way or something. I don't really care where it goes. Good. So the machine has currently stopped because we're not getting enough input in, that's fine. However, we are getting our silver in, and silver is the stuff that we need to make. Where is it? It's somewhere in there. Fetal serum. Uh, can we actually make it already? Or do I still have to research something fetal? Uh, no, we can make it. Silver plates, guts, and glassware. Uh, we will probably... How much do we need for the science upgrades? That's a good question. We will probably... I would just make a machine next to it and dump everything in. Science. Yes, yep, great. We need a hundred fetal serum per pack. And we make it at a rate of 50 
repair 15 guts. That's a lot of guts. Ha! Huh. One of those super rare follow bots. No, it would be so much nicer of these follow bots if they would actually. Um, oh, he has a hacked account. There's actually an account behind this. Well, you got bad mate. <laughs> That's what you get for not taking care of your account. Still, um, borax washers. One washer will make enough borax, um, or wash enough borax uh, to get this machine going, and it will put out over here. And we need to do yet again. And up and downy. Let's see. Uh, put it out over here. Go up. Go in. You go like this. That should be perfect. And you need raw borax as an input. The raw borax will be coming from over here. We still have these crystal mines, so we can still mine the borax. But however, for borax mining, we do need sin gas. Which we do have up here, at least a little bit. We hook up the coal gas we did. And the syn gas pipe is full. And down here is the borax. So let's see if we can crack this one open. Let's place one here and one here. This should make more than enough borax for us to work with. Like absolute tons of it. And then we just need to hook it up to the borax line. Uh, not the borax line, the syngas pipeline. Which is something we'll just do soonish. Oh, and there's all this sin gas over here. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we have more than enough sin gas. Tons of it. Let's actually hook it up immediately. Are these interconnected? No, they're not. Let's do that. Here we have these. Let's make use of the Syngas. It's always nice to have Syngas somewhere. And I would rather use it than vent it. Because venting it feels like a waste. However, we are making so much of it. So absolutely much of it. That I actually have no other choice than to vent it. Good. Borax is coming in. Then let's just go this way. Ah, just under. And then up. That's silver line. Nothing beats a good old belt, except the father, no wait. Uh, let's place you down here. You make water. Perfect. Queue up. Put you in. Put you in. Now we do have these tailings that we are making over here. Now this is going to be a bit annoying.
That just hear somebody scream. <laughs> and the next tailings processing unit is like miles away. Again, ludicrous miles, so we're just gonna destroy it for now. Also, you need an output. Press there. Uh, 1.5 per second should be more than enough to feed these. However, you do need as an input. 1.5 per second. And these are not making 1.5 per second. These are making 2 per second, so 4 per second. Uh, wait. No, that should be fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. So let's place this back ass tank over here. Tailings. We should vent them at some point. Or sink them. But I don't think we will be making that much either way. Then you. You will be the coke belt. And there should be coke. Ah. Yes, there is still a bit of a coke belt down here. Maybe we can cannibalize it. And maybe we can pocket craft a bit to get the belt going. We can pocket craft a bit. Make a bit of it in your pockets. This one is not required anymore. As are these. How the hell do you not have any power? So let's see. Uh, we're gonna pull it alongside of this one. There we go. Under over. All the way to the top. Borax coming in. And the only thing we need is the graphite. This is stuff that we're making down here. So once the coke comes in, we are making lead. And then comes the fun part. There will be a train station up here. And there will be... Still on the left, yeah, there's a late plat requester down here. So we will have to <laughs> um now actually we can probably fiddle it through in an insane way, but I see an angle. But let's wait for the lead to come. Also, why is silver going in? Oh, because we are still not making enough stuff. And before we actually make lead plates, the thing we're missing, the thing we still need to make. Uh, it's... Um, tar processing. And for this, we only need some circuits. So maybe we can... Yes, the circuit factory is not too far away from me, actually. It's somewhere over here. There should be circuits around over here. There they are. Make it our processor.
full on organic soap. Oh! Bush, my friend! How did it go? How does the colony go in oxygen not included? Also, you get the shot out immediately. Let me just park up my uh, beast over here. Bosch, the Bosch. No, not bot the bot. Bosch the Bosch. <laughs> there we go. Only. Are you still playing on that? Uh, what was it? On your second world, more or less. And hey there, Tom. How are you doing? By the way, have I shown you, Bosch? My vanilla ish LTN system. It still, it still looks a little bit mad, but this was the testing ground that I've set up, and it works like a charm. And soon we will be outfitting the first stations with it, and it'll go as planned. We did use a bit of wire in there, but in the end, uh, it was actually only one arithmetic combinator per um, requester, one per provider, and the requesters also require... Uh, a constant combinator. However, the depots are a little bit more complicated. How does it work? Uh, pretty easy, actually. Let me explain it to you. Let's let's actually go down there. Then we can show it. And I have no clue if Hapolas has made the same kind of system. Uh, or if I have invented a completely new one because I didn't look at the stuff Hapolis did. But I have my own system. I can proudly say I made it on my own. After playing a thousand hours of Factorio, you deserve your own logistic train system. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, it's over here. So, let's just check on which kind of values it still sets. It still sets on stack sizes of 10, yes. So, these are just your, your basic demo stations. Requesters, providers, and the requesters then feed it back into the providers so that things can go. Um, let's begin with the concept. The concept is based on full loads. Um, providers will prepare a signal whenever they have a full cargo load ready which you can use for your train system. Requesters always uh, look in their inventory, that's why we have this constant combinator over here, if they can accept a full load. And only if both a provider and a requester uh, are available, then only then a train will be dispatched over here. And stations will shut off, as you can see, the requester is out, uh, the providers are on, because the providers are currently full. Also, to make things go a little bit faster, we are just going to imagine that um, stack sizes are at 10. Uh, so 10 is a full load. Just so that this thing can go. Uh, let me just... Uh, let's see. Currently the system is stopped. Because the requests are full. But let me just uh, eat the steel pipe a little bit. Oop, there he goes. He then immediately goes. Picks up a delivery of 10. Which is technically... Oh, 20 is it? Yeah, it's still 20 in here. At some point, I set it to 10, but it should it should actually be 10. There we go. And brings it over to the requester. And then goes back. Now, the requester will still be providing. And as you can see, this train doesn't go. This is by design. Um, if you look at the train signals, you will see... Uh, that there are numbers over there and green are um, uh, Packages or deliveries that can be provided there are for example 75 Full cargo loads available now 74 because he just picked one up uh, Available for dispatch and there's only one requester as such we only need one train go from A to B however as soon as we uh, Open it up a bit and need more trains Let me just Finishes up. Oh, the second one also goes. So now we have two requests open and two providers open, and both trains will be required to work. And both of these trains will go to the stations and pick up uh, a package 
uh, a full cargo load, for example, and bring it to either one of the requesters. Now, there's the problem. I can't control which provider and which requester gets what. Uh, I can control that there are requesters and providers available, but if one of these uh, is full, the station will shut down. So, worst case scenario, there's a train sitting in here, it's filling up the station, the station shuts down, and the train that's also sitting behind here then decides, oh shit, I actually have to go over there. Uh, but this is more or less how it goes. Uh, so, sometimes we will have a train that is like uh, going from door to door, asking people, hey, did you ask for this? And no, nope, I'm full. And then he goes to the next one, and he goes like, nope, I'm also full. And to the next one, and to the next one. And it all actually, it's pretty simple. And the thing I did over here to make it a little bit easier on myself is this is a recursive train station. Now, oh, oh always start there. Uh, the first thing you have to do is there will be multiple signals on uh, the central uh, 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 network line. For example, now uh, there's only uh, iron plate on here, but later on there will be so much more. So the first thing you have to do is you have to sanitize it. Uh, you just pick up the input signal and uh, put it back out uh, one to one. And then the fun stuff happens. Now, because we do know how many parcels we have and how many parcels we can give. Uh, we subtract the parcels by one and give it further to the next one over. The next one over also subtracts it by one and gives it over to the next one. This allows us to regulate the amount of trains that are currently working. So that if there are two deliveries open and two uh, deliverers available, only two trains will go. Uh, so the available trains are set up to only carry one type of cargo. Yes, these are these are the bulk load trains. Um, I would need a second system for specific cargo, which we're also going to implement, because I don't want to have a big mega robo network. Uh, this is done for you uh, and Iron Wolf. I want to have multiple smaller networks. For example, over here, this will be the uh, well. This is the mall, more or less. <laughs> This will only this will be always be in its own network. Um, no, well, more or less. If you look at this, um, the assignments are pretty easy. Um, every kind of cargo will get its own depot. Every kind of uh, cargo will also get its own provider station name and requester station name. We have one for each, and then it's pretty simple. Then you only have this setup. You have deep, go to depot. Uh, wait a little bit uh, so that you can refuel and wait for the circuit signal to say you can go now Then you go to the provider you load up. This is the simulation for cargo technically uh, This one wouldn't be here, but this is for the simulation only uh, And then go to a available requester and this will only trigger if there is a provider and a requester available Really you just similar thing uh, Actually, I never watched that what you were doing over there. I'm still I maybe have to look what you're doing over your smalters over there. But yeah, this is how it goes. And it's very important. Now, this is the important part. Uh, because these stations open up from left to right, it's also very important that you fill the trains from left to right. So, uh, stacker input... Uh, well, not stacker input, but depot input is important. Also, we will not really require any stackers that much. Because these stations will be optimized of maximum input and maximum output, which means... They will only open up when they can actually accept the train. So a train comes in, unloads everything as it can, as fast as it can. So if we take a look in our blueprint book, stations look like this. Um, and we're only going with one-to-one -one trains, but technically you could just pull this thing down and make it as long as you want. This would be the providing station. Fill it up as fast as we can. Then we have the requesting station. And then we have the depot. The depot is pretty fun because the depot is set up that you can't just uh, pull it along as you want. You have to start with the start, but then you can do the recursion part and pull it along as big as you like. It will always work. And maybe we're also going to do a recursion part for uh, the requester and the provider station. Um... So that you maybe can make this longer if you want, or make this short if you want. Also, we have here a little bit more logic in. 
Uh, this allows you to, because we have varying stack sizes, uh, some uh, some stuff stacks up to 500, some stuff stacks only up to 100, etc., etc., etc. Some even only to 50. Uh, and to make it more manageable with other mods, if you want to use this in somewhere else, uh, you can set up how much space you have in my cargo wagon, how much is my stack size, and then compare it to whatever you want to do with it. So let me just take a bit of a look at the chat. Let's see. Uh, and Iron Wolf, did I answer your question? Probably I did. And Bosch, only two trades will go. You have a depot with a train inside the specific stations. I mean, and use similar. Uh, what Bosch has, what I do have is a depot with 20 trains, except all the trains are already full of resources. Then I look at how many stations I have opened, therefore the number of requests. And I open specific stations, so I never flood the thing and always have stations request full sorted. But the question, can you have a situation where you have two trains uh, at the same station, so the train one lease arrives, starts unloading, but it um, doesn't unload full cargo and stays in the station? No, that won't ever happen because we are always go, uh, uh, each delivery is always a full cargo wagon and the station will only open up if it can accept a full cargo wagon. Um... That's also why we have this one over here. This constant combinator. The only thing this thing does is tell us how full, how much we can stuff this thing up. And this doesn't even have to be uh, the theoretical maximum of this chest. This can be any number. It could only be like a number that's less than this. But this is how much we uh, fill it up. And then we divide it by the uh, cargo size number. So in our in simulation over here, every cargo size, every tray can only hold 10 items, for example. So if we divide it by 10, and we are over that number, then we can definitely fit a whole cargo train in there. Also, I can't read that. And it's April of the 1st. Oh, yes. Wait. Kill stream. <laughs> can somebody translate that for me? Or are the Russians, uh, again, up to no good? It says hello! Oh, that's nice. Good day to you, my sir. Good morning. Wait. Morning? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> but yeah, that's the LTN system we did. And currently, we are working on silver, which we are heavily technically done. And then we're going to feed the silver into... Uh, the blue science making machine and then we can make some blue science but only limited amount of blue science because the current blue science recipe we're doing costs uh, 10 red science and 10 green science and snowsies I can still not understand what you're saying over there but I assume all is well uh, um, yeah So, let's finish up that... Oop, 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 oop. Bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving. There we go. Nope. Snowsies, I still have no clue what you're talking about. How much is in there? 1.5k, it's already... Almost full. Um, Let's see. Well, let's just place it over here. Oh, fine. Uh, do the sand casting stuff. Perfect. Pull you over. Pull you in. Yes, I have, but I respect others and speak English. Wait, now I'm completely confused. <laughs> Well, it'll be fine. As long as you are having fun, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Oh god! The Danish are here! Nilaus! How are you doing, my friend? Do I do I have to make a shout out for you? 
Elas, there we go. Elas, have you been playing Factoria today? You have! Let me show my beautiful mess we have. Uh, it's, this is what you get if you are playing a mod pack which you are not experienced with and things just grow on you. <laughs> and thanks, Eventure Stream, for that follow. And yes, we are still in the early game of Pyanodons. Um Let me show you around a bit. Uh, we have... Uh, we have liquid manure, we have blood, we have these purple, uh, these blue flowers, we have uh, shit pits, uh, we have whatever this is, uh, we have farms, we have a rubber machine, we have this magnificent power plant, look at it. Um, we have this pollution cloud, we have biters everywhere, we are already up to evolution point, I think 9.6 or something, no, 9.1. And we are still on military too. Uh, let me just check this chat real quick. Drunken Slender, hello, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, the free slave, hey, I haven't seen you around in a while, but cool, cool for you for you coming by. Nilaus, yes. Jeskies, yes. Elite World uh, Order, how are you doing, my friend? Party Pig 45, now that's a good name. <laughs> the Rutiger, good day to you, sir, my sir. Apache 12222. Also, hello. And the event stream. Ah, uh, Pymods never touch it by now. No. Snow is asking if you have a uh, blueprint available. You mean this wing? I will post it after my stream in my Discord. How about that? Uh, it's probably too big for chat. Yes, we have shit pits. Uh, we have these. Uh, we have these arcs over here. They sit in the pit and they produce manure. We then take the manure. Uh, put it into water and make liquid manure. We then take the liquid manure and put it down in here to make some urea out of it. We then take the urea and make some cyanidic acid and some ammonia out of it. Then we take that stuff and make some melamine out of it. Then we take that stuff, make some melamine resin out of it. Then we take that stuff and make circuits out of it. So, uh, we are basically making shit circuits. At some point we were making blood circuits, but blood wasn't uh, as productive as shit, so we're making shit circuits. <laughs> yeah, and I do love the mess. You can see that I started out with some kind of a belt, but this was only the proto, uh, the, the proto bus, just to get things going, and we are moving up to tracks. We also have the mole down here. We have flying hot dogs uh, carrying around stuff. That's actually a good thing about this mod pack. You get access to robots a bit earlier than uh, normal, and they're also a bit cheaper. They don't require batteries or any chemical... Pro uh, a bit of chemical processing. Chemical processing is also a bit weird in here. And over here, we're basically making everything that we need at the moment. Uh, yes, toilet paper. <laughs> if you wonder where the toilet paper went, down there. <laughs> and yes, we have so much problems everywhere and we are running to crawl as fast as we can. Uh, at the beginning, because, um, because Green science took so bloody long. Uh, we were actually having problems with pollution and biters. Now we don't have that problem anymore because we are now a biter killing machine. But before we could handle biters, we had to do something very creative. We had to make these uh, pollution eating fortresses. Uh, these over here, for example, these all have a negative pollution footprint. Each one of these uh, consumes 35 pollution per minute. And then uh, the tree for seed farm and the moss farm also consume 35 per minute. So we were using these outposts as a kind of pollution barrier to keep the pollution in, which we are obviously not doing anymore. Um, yeah, this pollution cloud, all this pollution cloud over here, this is this is the copper machine making machine. The copper making machine also and uh, could run a little bit better. We have to switch over to the next best recipe and uh, Tom every time I was watching you Viking I thought there was a lot of uh, uh, there was lines of fly robots flying but it's just a long robot yeah these are really really fun these also look pretty amazing also 
For starter robots, these are pretty good because their initial cargo size is 3. So they can pick up 3 items at once, which is perfect for these machines over here. And to give you an imagine what we have to do, for example, if you want to make red circuits, if you haven't seen Pinodots, uh, red circuits require 5 batteries, 2 optical fiber, a simple circuit board, 3 diodes, 3 microchips, 50 medium power resistors, 3 transistors, 5 electrical uh, capacitors, 4 tordio inductors, 1 printed circuit substrate to tier 2, add 2 solder. The simple circuit boards that we also need for this. Stinks! Stinkies! Stinkies! Oh, stinkies! Why do you always have the people with the very best name that really, really want to be on my board? I dropped something. Uh, Sinkies, you are my 200th follower. You're coming on the board, my friend. Here, how do we write to you? Sinkies, yes. <laughs> 200 followers today. Well, in total, not today. 200 followers that came like walking in or something. <laughs> Thank you for that follow, my friend. We have reached the 200. And if I remember correctly, Bosch has reached 500 today. So today is a good day. My place in history, yes. Satan Dragon Bane expired Twinkie Bots. Yes, this is, happened. this is what happens when Twinkies expire. They fly and carry stuff around. Wait a minute. And yeah. Uh, also, take a look at this. These are all some kind of assembly machines that we can build. And we need all of these to make elaborate factories. This, this is one of my, my most favorite factories at the moment. This is iron ore processing. Uh, if I unfollow and follow you again, would that make me the 200th? No. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Uh, that's, that's not how it works. Uh, this is the iron ore processing. And this can give you a bit of an imagine what, what, what you're up in. Well, as always, the first thing you do with pure iron ore, you crush it. And then you get grade 1 iron ore out of it. Then you put the grade 1 iron ore in these scanners, in the screeners, and sort it into grade 2 and in grade 3. Toxic avocado and jerk skis! Thank you for that follow, my friends. Um, yes, yeah, so you screen it and turn the grade 1 into grade 2 and grade 2. The grade 2... Yeah, yeah. Jerksies, I have already shouted you out. Uh, the grade 2 then can get crushed into grade... Um, is this grade 1 again? No, this is processed iron. Yes, we get... Clear rack. Thank you for that follow, my friend. Basically, we crush it. We screen it. We crush it. We crush it. We ball crush it. We wash it. We slime it. <laughs> we cook it. <laughs> and then you get uh, the iron plate out of it down here. And then we can also take the molten iron and uh, cook it up even more to make some steel out of it. And then we can also make the steel out of it. Uh, currently, why is this backing up? Oh, it's probably backing up because, yeah. That's something I didn't really estimate. If the machine is running non-stop... Which it currently isn't. Because this line isn't running non-stop. If the machine is running non-stop, uh, the actual um, stone that we are producing as part of the processing can be reused to make the sand cast to make the plates. Uh, however, this is currently not the case. So we may might as well have to uh, uh, bug it a bit. Also, because we're making so much oxygen, and the only way we're making ox oxygen is by electrolyzing water over here, um, we basically place the power plant over here, uh, which makes uh, power out of hydrogen, just because we have it. I don't want to vent it. We do have vents installed in case uh, we don't need as much power. But I really, really try my best not to vent stuff. Um, well, we're venting pure water over here, so this is fine. But I really want to try to not uh, waste as much as much research resources as I can we still waste stuff here and there um, for example over here we're making so much tar I have no clue where to go with it actually no this is actually fine this is tar that goes back out but the coal gas over here this gets vented uh, because yeah can't do anything with it at the moment well we can but 
then everything would get bigger again and then we would produce even more and then everything would get bigger again and then you have your typical escalation uh, scenario where things just go into the infinity and beyond.